Hey there, this is Rick. I hope everyone's having a great day. And this is just a quick introduction to the video footage that I made uh, during the time I made my, uh, my fire pit in my back garden. Now what I do whenever I have a project, you know, a creation project on the go, what I do is I film the footage um, as I do it and then I generally play it all back and do a voiceover and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing in this video. So without further ado, here comes the footage. Enjoy. So okay, we started off with the uh, the basic shape. So this uh, is a, a stack of bricks. Uh, these are engineering bricks. And uh, once I was happy with the position and the, the height, what I did was I drew around uh, the inside with a pen, and that was going to be my marker for where I was actually going to cut into my patio. Here you can see the lines I've made on the floor. Now I needed a disc cutter and uh, obviously you wear safety specs when you do uh, anything with one of these and I simply cut a big hole in my patio using the uh, straight lines that I uh, made drawing around the bricks. It was just a case of stamping on the, the, the newly formed patio slab and uh, out it came. Next it was a case of just digging down into the mud. Uh, I have very clay soil where I am uh, so it was a little bit sticky but it was okay. And um, what I did I shoveled all the clay into a bag and I went down about 10 inches. And uh, that's going to be filled with pea shingle shortly. Uh, but what I did was I used the end of a brick and I just kind of flattened it all down and gave it a better shape. Then I cleaned up using a jet wash and I made sure all of the water was brushed into the hole to test how well uh, the hole drained. Obviously if it just filled up with water it wasn't going to be any good but fortunately the water drained away really easily. This is cutting a channel into the, uh, the concrete for the gas pipe. Again, another clean up and I again brushed all of the water into the hole in the middle again just to make sure that uh, it was going to drain away okay and it did it drained away really quickly Here you can see no water and this is the channel that uh, I cut for the 8 millimeter copper gas pipe just a quick uh, check to make sure that the Dutch oven uh, fits in okay. I hate dealing with cement dust. Look, look at how matted and horrible my hair is. That's just disgusting. So I think before I do anything else, I'm gonna go and have a shower. I'll see you in a minute. Right then, this is my Dutch oven. And this is designed to go inside the, uh, the actual fire place. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the, the gas burner ring and uh, I'm going to do it designed or I'm going to design it around this pot. Now what I want to be able to do is put the pot down. This, this has three legs and uh, obviously I don't want the legs pushing against the, the actual fire ring where the gas is coming out. So I'm making it sort of uh, just slightly bigger um, so that I've got a fighting chance of when I put this pot into the ground uh, it's not going to actually hit the, the gas ring. So here's the uh, the actual basic burner shape and that middle bit there will uh, is where the main gas is going to come in and it will feed the gas through these holes uh, that um, these are like the burner holes. Okay this is the test run I use some tea lights as igniters and it was just a case of rigging it up to uh, the gas bottle, turning the gas on slowly and uh, seeing what happened. And uh, it did exactly what I was hoping it would do and uh, was planning for it to do. This is what it looks like when you turn it up uh, full. Uh, 
I think I'm probably going to be using it most of the time on a low setting, just probably to save gas. This is a little additional cutout that I did for the, the main gas pipe. Uh, it just means it uh, keeps it further away from the, uh, the heat. This is a load of slate that I got from um, Wales actually. I took a quick trip to Wales and uh, I found an old disused quarry and uh, borrowed a bit of slate. This is uh, filling up the hole with uh, a bag of pea shingle and that's going to aid with uh, any drainage. This is what the, the actual burner is going to sit on. And now it's just a case of fitting the, the burner into place. I'm going to cut the pipe because there's going to be uh, um, a gas valve uh, fitted there. And here it is all fitted into place. There's the gas valve that I was talking about. And the rest of the gas pipe, which is going to be cemented into place, goes up to where the bottle's going to be. And uh, it'll be fed into this tube via a rubber pipe. Okay, time to uh, cement the pipe into place. That's quick drying cement. Still took two days to dry though. I think I uh, probably got the mix a little bit wrong. And then it was just time to build the, uh, the fire pit retaining wall. Once the wall had been built, uh, the idea was to clad around the outside with the natural stone that I got hold of because obviously I didn't, wasn't particularly keen on uh, the look of the red bricks but uh, with the, the natural stone clad around the outside uh, I think personally I think it looks much better. And here was my first attempt but I really didn't like those white stones. I, I used little white stones to fill in the gaps but it looked a bit rubbish so I went out and bought some green slate, a big bag of it and uh, I collected back the uh, the white stones and replaced them with the green slate and I think it looks a lot more natural. And there's pretty much the finished thing. Uh, all I need to do is put the, uh, the lava rocks in the middle. So there go the lava rocks. Now these are um, uh, lava rocks designed for gas barbecues. So um, I use them on the gas barbecue as well. So uh, I've used them before, they're quite good, except if you drip drip fat into them, they're very porous and you end up with these little smoke bombs. So anyway, there's the finished thing. Uh, I used some more of that green slate around the edges, just to make it uh, look a, a little bit pretty. And that's with the patio all cleaned up. I went over with the jet wash again, cleaned it all up. And it's pretty much ready to, um, to test fire. I also made a little housing for the gas cylinder with a waterproof roof and uh, there it is with the pipe in place, uh, the rubber pipe feeding the metal pipe and uh, it's basically ready to go. So test firing for the first time, that's a little fire lighter just lighting it and uh, once it's lit it's a case of turning on the gas and we have ignition. It on full blast. And when you turn it down, uh, you can just have a, a, a kind of a, a small fire and that's what it looks like uh, on the low setting. So that was how I made my fire pit. 
in the back garden. Now I must add, uh, I did use the Dutch oven uh, earlier today. Um, what I found by putting the Dutch oven into the flames was uh, the amount of, of, of uh, what's the word, soot and coke that caked itself around the, the Dutch oven was, was quite, uh, quite staggering. And cleaning the Dutch oven afterwards was a bit of a nightmare. So um, I'm presuming that soot has come from the burning of the gas. Now, I'm not quite sure how to get around that problem and uh, whether if I were to change gas source to something else, I don't know whether um, a propane or some sort of natural gas or something um, might eliminate that problem. Um, I don't know, but obviously if, if you do, then do feel free to leave a note at the, um, you know, in, in the notes area. So that was my video on how I built my gas uh, fire pit. Do feel free to leave a video response if you've done one yourself. And uh, well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day and I'll see you next time.